Okay, it's time for our very first hot topic. Nigeria risks losing Africa's biggest economy status as Naira continues to fall, sending shockwave across the market, throwing many bank chiefs off guard. The currency crisis has strung the books by close to 50%, putting pressure on the capital adequacy levels of the sector. We're about to discuss this now with Basile Abia of the Kwako Research Institute. Good morning to you, Basile. Good morning to you, Basile. Good morning, Emma. It's my pleasure to be here. So good to have you. Well, capital erosion for banks as the Naira continues to fall and the pressure on these banks to beef up their capital base is, 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 is on. Talk to us about how big a challenge this is for them. Um, when you have a situation where um, the value of the Naira against the dollar has eroded by at least 50%, there's a price differential between the official window, that's the investors and exporters uh, window, when the price is differential is between 60 to 100 Naira vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, what the price is in the black market, then obviously you know that the Naira is, you know, grossly overvalued. And that's exactly what foreign portfolio investors have been saying for the last uh, two to three months. Uh, and so in the context of, of, of uh, capitalization or bank capital holdings, we're seeing that uh, valuations for most, fact, valuations for the entire banking industry has uh, been caught by at least uh, 40%, if I'm trying to be very conservative. So uh, you're having a situation where the entire valuation base of Nigeria's banking industry is being exposed to the devaluation of the Naira um, as against the dollar. And, and, and what happens is that uh, liabilities, uh, all of the bank holding liabilities that are based on uh, FX, the holdings that are uh, either denominated in dollar or denominated in euro or denominated in the yuan or any currency outside of the Naira, for instance, um, the, those valuations are, are, are 50, 60, 70 percent lower than they were, say, three to four months ago prior to the floating. Uh, of the Naira or the crawl peg, or what CPN and other experts call the crawl peg. So what you're seeing here is that um, based on Basel II and Basel III um, regulatory requirements, and basically Basel II, ba Basel III, and Basel I, they're just cute English or technical English for um, a global regulatory framework for banks where there is stress testing, uh, and then there's obviously the, the capital adequacy of the banks. So basically what that means is that uh, banks have certain levels of liquidity uh, that they must leave, thresholds of liquidity that they must have, uh, obviously mostly denominate, denominated in dollar to be able to um, stress prove them in case of uh, situations where the financial industry obviously is nearing collapse. And I think what led to Basel III being instituted as a global standard was the aftermath of the 2008-2009 global uh, financial crisis. And you have a situation where most Nigerian banks adhere to Basel II and, of course, now Basel III. And due to those um, capital adequacy frameworks, banks have to find, way to find ways uh, for more liquidity injections. If they don't uh, prop up their liquidity injections, especially in, in, in the dollar base, or their capital holdings in dollar base are not propped up, then they're at risk of um, you know, uh, running out of uh, their debt services. They have a lot of debt obligations. Most of the, those debt obligations are in dollars uh, and in pounds and in euros. And if they're not able to meet those obligations, then they are nearing collapse or they, they collapse in that sense. So investors' money is uh, obviously exposed. The entire financial industry in Nigeria is exposed. That could lead to a, a crisis level. So. Um, we're seeing situations where certain experts, especially uh, based in Lagos, are clamoring for an intervention from the CPN. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year, just around November, when there was some stressors on the Naira, this time it wasn't even floated, by the way, the exchange was still um, heavily restricted in that sense and, and heavily controlled by, by the CPN. But the CPN had to intervene by, with over 17.8 billion US dollars, uh, you know, not obviously in that timeline, but in the time frame uh, for the entirety of 2022, they intervened in the um, 
into bank exchange uh, window uh, mm. with a worth, a total worth of about $17.8 billion. And that's because they knew they couldn't uh, allow the Naira against the dollar to exceed the resistance point of about 860, 870 Naira to a dollar. And what will happen was just after that, that final uh, intervention, the Naira was managed uh, around the 700 range. And that's what has been the case until uh, the Naira was floated and the devaluation happened um, uh, last month. So, yeah, the, the, the banking industry is at risk. They, they would obviously need, uh, be a need for recapitalization. Um, and that will obviously be based on CBN's, uh, you know, direction, regulatory direction. So we we're expecting that banks will do some recapitalization. Banks are already finding creative ways, for instance, to prop up their capital holdings, especially uh, the ones that are US dollar denominated. Mm. That, that's, that's uh, I think, the, the explanation for what's currently happening. All right. Well, reports also have shown that their liabilities have ballooned to over about 60 percent. The Naira is now 850. You know, when this, um, the floating of the currency they, they came up, we thought that we'll see some sort of release of the dollar to be able to match up with the new policy. But I, I'm not sure if that's what we saw. Explain further on this. Am I right? I first of all, yeah, 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 obviously, conventional economics uh, with regards to foreign exchange, you expect that when it's floated, uh, based on the framework of the free market, you know, demand and supply, you expect some form of investor confidence in the market. And that investor confidence is expected to draw in more foreign exchange, right? Mm -hmm. But in the context of Nigeria, there are lots of structural issues that we have to be able to face. And one of that is to be able to ensure that the, uh, when FX liquidity comes in, there is a seamless repatriation of the FX liquidity uh, based on capital gains for, for those investments. So if you're an FBI investor and you're, you're investing in the Nigerian equities market based on the news that uh, the, the Nigerian foreign exchange window is now market-based, uh, you, you expect that uh, whenever you want to take in your and, and, and because FBI is very fluid in terms of the investment time frame, you could invest in the equities market this week and next week you get your gains uh, based on the volume that, say, you invested on, 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 on certain equities for Nigerian banks and maybe the telecoms uh, companies listed on Nigerian uh, stock exchange. So you're expecting that by next week, you're expected to get your, your, your returns, right? But knowing the formality with, uh, with accessing FX in Nigeria with the CPN. CPN did not even have, uh, to date, they still don't have enough FX liquidity to meet all of the demands. We know that they are still owing a number, in fact, an armada of foreign corporations, uh, uh, huge volume and units of US dollars. We know that uh, they're owing uh, foreign airlines close to 800, mm. if I'm not mistaken, about 850 million US dollars, mm. you know, the highest in the entire country. So if CPN is not making uh, 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 or executing certain frameworks to ensure that first and foremost these FX backlogs are cleared, and with the news of these FX backlogs being cleared, obviously money follows where they know it can be retrieved, right? So mm -hmm. you you start to see those liquidity uh, injections from investors uh, faster than normal. That has not been the case in the last two months uh, since, of course, the macroeconomic reforms by the Tinubu uh, president the kick started. So. We're having a situation where even FBI investors are asking for more, more work from the CPN. Uh, I, I, I know for a fact that there was a Bloomberg article two weeks ago asking for the interest rates to be increased again to be able to account for our inflation rates uh, that is hovering around 22%, you know, 22, 23%. So uh, with the NPR or the interest rate around 18.5%, you're expecting that maybe CPN could adhere to some of those cries, uh, even though it is detrimental to, to the, increase the, the, the rate, interest rate. In Nigeria. Yes, yes, yes. FBI want FBI investors are clamoring for an increase of the NPR to at least 21 to 22 percent uh, to account for those high inflation numbers. I'm where not does sure that leave? Where, where does that leave to. Nigerians then? Well, it means that um, credit availability in the real sector is harder. It means that um, consumers, consumers will have to bear the, the, the cost of how expensive debt or credit 
is uh, in the Nigerian economy. It means that uh, the production units in Nigeria's economy will struggle to access debt, uh, debt financing, and obviously production uh, uh, is production starts to reduce. We've already noticed the production lag in the last two, three months due, uh, as a consequence of the the, uh, the macroeconomic policies that have been carried out. We know that uh, consumers are cutting down on their purchase or purchasing power uh, intentionally and unintentionally, unintentionally obviously due to inflation and intentionally due to uh, a reaction to inflation. So like, if you were buying, uh, uh, let's say we were buying food three times a day, you're cutting down to twice a day or sometimes once a day, right? That is always obviously going to have a transmission effect and a multiplier effect in the, the larger economy. And so those huge unit producers have to cut down on their, their, their production levels or production frequencies. And that obviously has a multiplier effect throughout the economy. And yeah, um, the economy is currently going through all of these price shocks as a consequence of um, all of these decisions. So, that's that's the situation that we're in now. Um, even with the floating, uh, unfortunately, the naira the naira is struggling, and the major reason why the naira is struggling is that we don't have enough foreign exchange uh, influx into the economy. Well, you know, when all this with all this happening, one begins to have these fears for the naira. I mean, when you remember. Zimbabwe, <laughs> and some of these other countries whose currencies are so weak, you fear that Naira may eventually get to that point. Is that fear justifiable, or is this just... How do you address the fear? Well, I'll be realistic. I don't think there's any need to be fearful of Zimbabwe or Venezuela happening. It's going to take a lot more... Uh, structural deficiencies, a lot more terrible policy decisions to reach that level. I think we have enough coverage, um, even though we are currently at our lowest external reserve rates uh, in over three years, the lowest that we've had in the last three years. Um, news just dropped in very early this morning that our external reserves dropped to about 3 billion US dollars. And don't forget that we use our external reserves to prop up the NARA or defend the NARA. So if you're guessing where CPN is getting that 17 billion US dollars uh, to be inject in the foreign exchange market, especially in the interbank exchange uh, window, is largely from our, our external reserves. So uh, we have, I wouldn't say we have sufficient reserves, but we have decent enough reserves and we have the, 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 the know-how from the CPN to be able to ensure that the NARA doesn't collapse at that rate. But, there are warnings. The know-how, your warnings. confidence First that we have that sure. know-how. You see, having confidence in the CBN with all the FX backlog and all these things that Nigeria has witnessed in the past eight years. You still have that much confidence well, in the not, CBN? Not much confidence, but confident, I'm confident enough to know that um, the CBN aren't going to make more foolish decisions. They will probably uh, continue to provide uh, debt monetization, and what I mean by that is basically printing more NARA for the federal government. They would uh, probably increase NPR by maybe another 300 basis points in the next eight months. That that basically means that uh, interest rate would be at about 21% by the end of this year, or around 22%, just around what the FBI uh, investors want. They would make some more bad decisions, but they wouldn't make <laughs> enough for us to, uh, you know, reach a Venezuela situation. You know, the Venezuela situation is when the federal government starts to nationalize assets, you know, mm. starts to ensure that uh, foreign exchange windows are now very strict. There's no longer a crawl peg, but uh, in fact, I would call it a, a board level type of uh, command control economy where they are only disbursing FX based on uh, their own discretion. It's no longer on any uh, market framework whatsoever. So I, I do not think CPN is ever going to reach that level. I do not think that the federal government would reach any of those levels, uh, but there's still, there's still um, leg room, if you permit me to say, there's still leg room for more terrible policy decisions that would affect us. Um, Before we could get to levels, that. But not, not those, those, those Venezuela levels of crisis yet. Yeah, the last time I spoke with you, I asked how long you think you project it might take uh, the market forces to uh, leave its time and things to stabilize. You said 12 months. Do you still yeah, have that still same projection? That. Yes, I still stand by that, um, 12 months. 
I think, I think my, my, my predictions are based on a number of factors. First and foremost, exogenous factors. Uh, what I mean by that are that uh, because the bulk of our economy is dependent on our oil exports or our revenues from oil sales, um, I think that the global oil market would, would stick to those 70 to $80 per barrel numbers. Um, so that's more than enough for us to continue to float uh, as, as an economy. Um, I also think that um, we're going to continue to increase our oil production levels. I think we're, we're not that I, I think the, the data uh, for the last month is that we, we did 1.4 million barrels. Uh, there's a probability that we would reach at least 1.6 million barrels before the end of the year. That's another factor. Um, third factor is that we've already removed a core factor of what used to hemorrhage our, our, our public uh, boards. And what I mean by that is that we used to spend so much of our FX earnings on our subsidy bill. Now we've cut that out, uh, which gives us legroom. There's, F, there's sufficient FX for us to be able to spend uh, this boss. Uh, as you have noted, but are we last seeing night, the FX though? Are we seeing it? Well, well, a, a testament to us seeing the FX is that even though there's an FX scarcity, we had our highest, um, um, our highest um, FAC allocation levels. Uh, yesterday, last night, states are getting uh, more, more revenues than, 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 than possible because of that FX, uh, that subsidy bill being removed, you know. And, and, and the more decentralized FX imputes are, the better the economic outcome. So it basically means that states now have more money to spend on capital projects and, of course, on uh, re recurrent expenditure like salaries. So. Um, I'm not betting on state governors to do the right things with this money because I have more than enough sample size to work with. And the mm -hmm. sample size is that our state governors are largely not good enough. And we've yeah. seen that from 1992. Now, that's enough evidence to base that judgment on. Yeah. Uh, but, but based on the, a number of things that I've mentioned, the exogenous influence of uh, oil prices, uh, the stability of the economy due to the fact that we no longer have to spend those humongous amounts of money on a, a, a subsidy, on paying for subsidy, and, and, and you know, a likelihood that um, stabilization will happen earlier than, than normal. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm confident that in the next 12 months, we'll see some stability. I'm not saying that things will get better. I'm just saying that um, on the foreign exchange window, at least, we'll find a, a price point that we can stick with. We found a, a price point early this year in January, February, at around 740 Naira. Uh, per dollar, and that stood for six months. Um, obviously, due to interventions by the CBN, I'm confident that in the next two weeks, the CBN will inject some form of interventions again, so that um, we don't pass the resistance points of about 816 naira. So it goes back to around 700, or even just over in the early 800s. And if it stays in the early 800s for five, six, seven months. Then Goodness. that is price discovery point. And with price discovery point, there's a bit of stability. There's no speculation. Uh, people in the markets know exactly what rates they're going to get it at. People know what the 850. numbers are. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 60 some, 863, <sighs> some, uh, some, uh, some black market sellers are saying in Lagos and in Abuja. It is scary, Basile. It is scary. It is scary. Everything is. People can't even travel anymore. A lot of things have been affected terribly. It is scary to think that the dollar will uh, narrow remain at 850 or 60 for more than one, two, three, four, five months. It, it is scary. But then we keep It could get worse as well. It, it could, could get, get worse. worse. Well. It could get yeah. worse. And so people are asking, um, what do you think will get to 1,000 first? Is it the, the fuel price or the, the Naira? Well, I don't think we're going to see 1,000 Naira units uh, in terms of value for either full price or for the dollar. But again, I have not, these things are not, these predictions are not set in stone. They're, they're, you make predictions based on available data points, right? The available data points that I have, I think we'll manage just um, around the age 50. Please don't, uh, don't discount the fact that I'm sounding this way to say that things are not terrible. Things are really, really terrible. I, I know personal stories. I, I see things, I know what I'm going through personally uh, in terms of uh, inflation affecting my pockets and all of that. I see the numbers on a daily basis. The economy is currently being battered. The price shocks are 
unbearable, no doubt about that. But what I'm trying to say here is not to impose confidence in the markets, but just explain uh, in pure, uh, in layman English, exactly mm. what the numbers are telling me. As I, as I mentioned, I mentioned the numbers with regards uh, uh, interventions that the CBN has made in the last one year. I mentioned the fact that our, our, our exchange reserves have dipped to our lowest levels in three years. Uh, and I mentioned, of course, the, 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 what the pricing is in the black market as well as on the, uh, on the I and E FX window. I and E FX window is uh, about 763 naira, if I'm not mistaken, black market is 863, 870, depending on where you're getting your news from in, in Lagos and Abuja. So um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be, uh, be a lot more of these problems, but I, I, do, I do not see um, oil price, um, PMS price going to 1,000. Hopefully, and, uh, it there. Hopefully, it doesn't get there. Hopefully, it doesn't get there. Thank you so much. There's some news as well. We're, we're yeah. getting 27 million um, liters uh, of PMS yeah. from Rotterdam um, this week. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, yes. take ob obviously two more weeks for that to flood into the market. I don't know how much of that volume will, will cost pricing to reduce, but I do know that pricing would will, will stabilize. Well, the importer uh, has lamented the high cost of importing that fuel. The importer has lamented it, uh, the, the cost of importing it and is clamoring for the fixing of our refineries as the only way to go. So there you have it. We'll wait and see how the arrival of this petrol would affect the cost of fuel in the, in the coming days. Just to make days. my final point, with regards to the importer, um, to, 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 to interest you and the entire audience to know that it took six Nigerian banks, exactly. six Nigerian banks, to provide li the liquidity needed for that import. Uh, that's to tell you how terrible the how uh, terrible it is. is. Six banks yeah. to facilitate the importation of that, uh, you know, that vessel. So thank you so much, Basile Abia, for your time. Basile is of the Quaco Research, and he's joined us this morning to uh, to discuss this very serious issue on our very first hot topic. Thank you, Basile. We'll be right back to give morning. you our second Thank hot topic.